All right, so this is the DAO. It's a decentralized autonomous organization game. So it plays around with governance and economics on chain, blockchain voting. There's a lot of interesting things that we can do with it because it's sort of this open-ended world. You sort of have these emojis and anyone can create an emoji and each emoji is backed by a smart contract. And then there is this governance layer that lets you vote in new emojis and it just lets us kind of play around with some skin in the game, but not a ton of the, a ton of skin in the game, right? It's kind of like uh, fantasy football for crypto nerds. You can sort of like spend 10 bucks and come play this kind of Moloch DAO powered browser game and play around with economic situations, play around with governance where there's some skin in the game, but you're not gonna lose millions of dollars. And maybe we find some weird edge case where you know the governance falls apart or we kind of learn how politicking works on chain. Okay, so here we go. This is basically what the map is gonna look like. You'll see the emojis, it's kind of like this grid. Uh, your rules are up here. Um, we'll, we'll just dive into it and the Moloch is down here, but this is kind of a basic look at what the game looks like. Let's just go ahead and uh, dive in and check it out. Okay, so uh, I'm going to create a game and we're gonna do a very, very simple game first. It's just gonna be a simple, uh, what we'll call a population race. Okay, and so you can pick a different environment and each different environment has a utility emoji. This utility emoji is like a smiley face. And I say utility emoji because you'll use it to do some of like the very basic concepts of the game. It's one of the only things that's hard coded in the environment is the fact that this smiley face will be the emoji that you'll use to participate in the governance, to explore, to build. So, so let's set up some game mechanics. Now, each one of these game mechanics is a smart contract. And uh, we are going to have just two simple game mechanics. And this is gonna be the important one. So you'll have a tent. And a tent will be able to be built on a blank spot and it will cost you one of your smiley face, face emojis and you'll earn three smiley face emojis for each six blocks that get mined. So that's basically the entire game that we're gonna play here. We're not gonna bring in the, the Moloch, we're not gonna do anything crazy. We'll, we'll have smiley faces and they sort of represent population and you'll spend some population to build tents and your tents will generate more population and the first person to 25 population will win the pot and we're all gonna buy in with a dollar of our Dow coins, okay? So let's get started. So I'll click this and it will deploy a Moloch DAO for us. And this is on XDAI, by the way. This game was uh, sponsored by POA. And now it deployed the DAO. Now it's ritualistically sacrificing. And that's just linking up the DAO with the Moloch. And you should see a button show up. It's called Population Race. And if you go ahead and click into that button, we can- I'm already in. I'm already in. That. Okay. so. Disclaimer, don't hit start. <laughs> if what basically the, what, the way the game works is everyone hits approve and you're approving the contract to take a dollar and then we're gonna join. And then once we're all joined in, you can hit ready, but you don't wanna hit start yet until everybody's in. So this join button kind of gives you the format of how the buttons look. Basically, you're gonna pay a dollar and you're going to get five population. So go ahead and approve and go ahead and join and we'll see all of the players start to show up and go ahead and hit ready too, but don't hit start. Because if we basically have more than 50% of the people ready, then it's you're available to start. And I think we have about 10 people on the call, so we'll kind of wait till we get close to 10 players here. So if you click start before everybody's ready, that freezes funds in a multi-sig somewhere? No, it just means that no one else can get in to play the game. We're trying to just wait for enough people to get in. Like basically, you'll just start the game without someone being in. The, the funds, right now, the funds are already locked up in the contract. We can see that there's already $9 in the pot. So, so right now, you can take some time to kind of like, before we get started, you can see, you know, there's an inventory emoji, and then there's this buildable emoji, and how it kind of works. And you can look that there's $9 in the pot, and then this is the victory condition of 25. You can kind of just get a feel for what the rules of the game are going to be. I think we have enough people uh, in. We have nine, so we have close to everybody in the call, but 
uh, you know, let's let's uh, get started. Unless anybody, uh, I don't see anybody waving their hands in uh, video, so I'm going to assume that we're all ready. So I'm going to hit start. Okay. So over here on the right, we can see the global view of everyone, right? And we can see that everyone has five population, and we're racing to 25. So the first action you want to do is click this little build, and we're going to spend one of our population to build our first tent. And over on the right here, we're gonna see people start to pop in and start to build their tent. Okay, so now you can use some of your remaining population to explore around you. You can see that some other people are close to me already, and territory is important here because you're gonna to wanna to have some open land to build more tents on. And the way uh, the, way the ex exploration works, I, I changed it, it used to be a little compass emoji, but I changed it into uh, a telescope because the compass emoji is so new that it doesn't show up on a lot of some people might notice some of these emojis that are broken, and it totally just depends on what platform you're on. So we can see that this person in the bottom right is really off to a hot start. Something tells me that's probably Mitch or someone who's played before, because they've already got four tents, and they're really uh -huh. generating quickly. But what you can do is you can, now, now you see this, how this smiley face has shown up next to my tent, that means it's ready to be collected. So every six blocks that are mined on chain, I earn three population. And you can kind of see the population changing down here, and what you can do is you can build more tents, and that's what you want to do. You kind of want to balance the amount of tents that you build with the amount that you explore, with the amount that you collect. And uh, that's basically going to be this game. We're all racing to try to get to 25 population. This is just an introductory game. We're not using any of the on-chain governance. We're not doing anything tricky. There's just one simple rule, population and building up to that population. Let's see, who's, who's winning down here? Oh yeah, this guy's winning, he's already got 11. Someone, someone is uh, uh, way ahead of us here. Who could that be? <laughs> so yeah, it, this, is, this is basically it. Uh, let, me, let me pull up the smart contract for uh, the tent, just to show that it's sort of, so this is the smart contract for the tent. It kind of takes in an emoji, there's, there's a cost array, of emojis and amounts. In this case, it's one population. And then there's kind of this build function that goes out and talks to the DAO contract. So each, each, oh, someone's right about to win. He's already at 23. So each of these emojis is represented by a smart contract. There, someone won. Okay. So that person will be able to, to be the best. You gotta beat the best, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Stop winning, baby. Woo! That's good because you were down to two dollars. Now you have enough money to play in a bigger pot. <laughs> so, uh, yep, that is the game. So no one else knows what the fuck just happened. Just like crypto markets in 2017. What's old is new again, baby. Got to win. Woo! So, <laughs> I copy the template for that game so we can play it again. Uh, basically, you get the, the idea of it, I hope. Uh, what, what the winner there will have is a button right here to collect, and they'll be able to collect their $9. I think it's still there. I don't think he's collected it yet. Have you collected your winnings yet? I don't, I'm, I don't even know if I believe that Mitch was the winner yet. I'm not I even sure. Stuck up that, oh my God, then I press done, and then the money hits my account. There we go. The Mitch get Mitcher. The Mitch get Mitcher. I'll sit out the next game. I'll sit out the next game. <laughs> okay, so uh, we can also kind of, I'm going to put a barf emoji. Yeah, you can put some emojis down here. What that is is you're tipping the developers one penny and you're showing your, uh, your respect and, and whatever your emojis are for the game. Then you can hit done and we will go back to the lobby and I will get another game started which will be very similar now that we kind of have an idea of how this is gonna work. Uh, I think I can just paste in the template link, I hope, and it'll just kind of create everything for me. We'll do another population race, but this time we'll bring in uh, some more uh, rules and we'll bring them in through a voting process and we'll go for maybe like 50 population to kind of make the game take a little bit longer. Um, population. Race two. Okay, everybody's gonna buy in for a dollar again. Uh, actually, uh, let's let us let us add one more uh, uh, one more concept, and that's the discoverable. 
So I'm gonna make it, actually there might be one right here. Yep, here we go. So here is a discoverable contract. So as you were kind of exploring, 15% of the time now you're gonna find a mountain and that mountain will generate bricks. Uh, but we won't really do anything with those bricks yet. But I'm gonna add those into the game so they're ready to go. I think we're ready. I'm going to deploy that contract. So another green field as the environment. Population race is basically the concept. The utility emoji is the smiley face. Uh, you can spend your dollar and uh, jump on in the game. But don't hit start till we have more players. Explaining what you did to win so quickly there. Uh, I can't hear your audio. So basically the way he won was he was he was maximizing his so your tents are generating your population, right? So so basically a tent only costs one population, but it generates you three every six blocks. So he immediately explored with one emoji and then built a tent with another emoji. So by the time I had my like second tent down, he had five tents. So he basically was just generating more population faster because he had he had covered more ground and he had put down more tents. I used to be a pro gamer too, Dota too. So you're not going to beat my APM, dude. I'm not telling you. That. <laughs> it's and it's like we we learned when we were playing with a meme that like button mashing doesn't really kind of pay off like because of the way the UI is kind of broken. I need to make it better so there isn't kind of like the two layer UI where. You click in and you have to wait. You click it and you have to wait. Uh, seven players, are, are we in? Is everybody in? Go ahead and hit ready. This will be a seven player game. So the, yeah, so basically uh, you're kind of like balancing. Oh, you're balancing. Oh, we got an eighth player. Good thing we didn't hit start. All right. I, there should almost be like a countdown where I hit start and there's like a 10, 9, 8, 7 so people have time. But I'm going to hit start and we're going to start the game. So uh, same game as last time, except for now we've added a few more rules. We've added mountains that are a discoverable. Uh, you, oh no, can I get in? But we want the map here. So this is kind of built so you can have, you know, have some people over to your house, put it up on a big screen. You put this screen up on the big screen and then everyone plays kind of with their local private version kind of on their mobile phones, right? So you can hand out, do I have some DAO paper wallets? I don't have any DAO paper. But basically you hand out paper wallets with private keys in them. I, I can show you how to generate those. And then everyone just has DAO tokens and you kind of play the game. Okay, so we're exploring, we're building. This time you're going to find some mountains here and there. And your mountains are gonna generate bricks and those are just some mechanics that we added in randomly. The, the game is very open-ended. But I'm going to add one other thing. So here, here's the governance layer I'm going to, I'm going to add in. So it's going to cost me two uh, population to add a new rule in. But I'm going to add a new rule, and it'll go up for vote. And we can all vote either for it or against it. So I'm going to create, I think there's already a, yeah, let's, let's not even do, let's, let's do a fully brand new contract. So I'm going to set it up so you can build a castle and it's going to be a buildable, and it's going to be built on a tent, and it'll give you more influence, which is kind of like how much you can build around and give you a zoom. It's going to cost you maybe five population, and it's going to cost you uh, maybe three brick, okay? But you're going to earn maybe nine at every six blocks, so like three times as much as a tent. So, so if you go through the work of building this castle, you're going to get to that victory condition quicker. Okay, so when I hit deploy mechanic here, it's actually deploying a smart contract with those rules. And I'm even going to sweeten the pot and put an extra 25 cents in if this thing passes. So I'm going to pay my two population. And you guys will see down at the bottom of your screens, you're going to see a proposal come into place. And these are, this is just, this is almost an exact Moloch DAO. It's, it's um, adapted just a little bit for a few things like bringing in the mechanic, instead of deploying capital, it's bringing in the mechanics. But uh, anybody can see that this vote is about to go. And also the rage quit is a little different. Instead of rage quitting the Moloch, you're actually rage quitting the entire game. And you can take a cut of your funds back. 
So oh, I don't have any population. You'll need, you'll need at least one population to be able to vote on this thing. And you click thumbs up to vote. And if you're wondering what you're voting on, you can click, you can kind of go look over here and you can say, well, what the heck is this thing that he's deploying? Oh, here are all the rules. It's still ugly, but you know, it, you get the point. This is kind of a proof of concept. So let's see who's winning. We got somebody with 28 already, 24, 21. This is a closer game. We're neck and neck. There's tents all over. We've got some people that have discovered some mountains. I got to discover some mountains so I can get some brick. And let's see, did our, did our thing pass? So we still have three, we've got two rounds. All right, so I discovered some mountain there. Any questions or anything, just throw them in the chat or shout them out, let me know. Happy to answer anything. Um, uh, the number in like the right that says 14, what is, what is that for? Uh, that's how many blocks were into the game. It's, it's, it helps you to decide if you want to rage quit or not. So the longer you're in the game, the less money you can pull out. And also it may see now the rage quit is actually an active button and it doesn't work right now. There's something goofy with the smart contract still working on it, but I think it's going to have to do with how many times you voted yes and some combination of how long you're in the game. So we've been in the game for 15 blocks. Whoa. Did someone get to 50 already? That was me. Dang, dude, how'd you do that so fast? I couldn't let Mitch win again. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even get we didn't even get our vote in. Good work, man. That was fast. Yeah, you gotta we gotta play like four hundred or something. I think. Right, right, right. So uh, we'll we'll do we'll do one more quick game uh, just to demonstrate that we can do this. Yeah, we we should have brought our vote in. We'll 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 do one more quick game to demonstrate a couple different things. So I'm gonna do a completely different game here. We'll do uh, like a little. We'll do space. And we'll do a space race. So, so these different environments are just a smart contract that talk about what colors things are, and they set up this utility emoji. So we're all going to buy in for a dollar. I'm going to have to add these mechanics manually because of uh, what do we need? lightning. Uh, it didn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna deploy lightning and that's gonna be our utility emoji. So this time you'll use, you'll have to use lightning to, uh, to vote on, how, to vote on, um, what's that, go ahead. Austin, I think Christoph asked a good question. Like, you know when you, you say like uh, collect and then it like goes to the second page, can you press collect and then X out of it? Or do you have to okay. wait for it to settle and pop back? No, you totally can. Was that in the Telegram? I missed that. You just yeah, you just asked something. Oh, okay. Oh, I see it. Yep. The yep. Telegram, yeah. Um, yep, that you is saying important. you have to wait for the transition yeah. to oh. finish. Yeah. No, so you have to write because they have to be quiet. It's all good. Yeah, totally good. I think you, you said you had a kid sleeping. Yeah, so you you can X out. So basically once you hit it, get it started. This is this is what I'm talking about about the UI being pretty clunky is once you get it started, it's actually going to work. So you can just go ahead and let that, um, you, you can just, you could X out of it, but, but the UI then returns some stuff back. So it's, it's still a little clunky. Okay, so we are going to, uh, it's gonna cost you two and you're gonna earn, what is it? Three and six maybe, something, something similar. So this time we're gonna have a satellite and it's gonna be in space and you're gonna use electricity to build a satellite and then that satellite is gonna generate electricity for you. We actually deployed that contract. Okay, and then let's make it discoverable similar to what the mountains were this time and make it, let's see, make it like a, ooh, like a moon, okay. Discoverable is a moon, and it'll show up maybe 20% of the time. Well, that's not it. Let's look for like, there we go, like 8% of the time. You'll find a moon, and what should we earn from moons? Uh, hmm. Cheese. Cheese, all right, that's a good one. Of course. 
So you'll you'll earn one cheese uh, every maybe six blocks. So it's gonna come in slow, and it's gonna be hard to find. But if you find that, maybe we'll make that the victory condition. We'll make cheese the victory condition. Oh, did I already make lightning the victory condition? Let me let me change one thing here. So the templating system works so you can kind of copy and paste the URL. Uh, help. Yeah, there we go. And we need uh, cheese. All right. And we'll deploy that. And we'll have the victory condition be that you are uh, maybe five cheese. And then that should give us time to play around with the Moloch since this guy cut us out last time. All right, I think we're good. I think this will work. All right, so the point here is that we'll have a completely different environment and, and this can be completely different. Like each, each emoji is represented by a smart contract and that smart contract has full access to the game state. So technically you could vote in some very nefarious contract that could just give someone money. And, and the goal is using emojis, anyone can deploy these things. So it should be very approachable for anyone to kind of make rules, but there's, there's only certain cases where you're kind of incentivized to make those rules. Oh, we're gonna get 10 electric to start. Okay, so join on into the game. We'll get this last game going. Uh, it's gonna be a race for cheese. So yeah, you start with electricity. Yep. You build electricity. satellites. Yep. Electricity will be the utility emoji, and that's what you use to vote or discover or build. And uh, you can see this satellite will cost you two electricity to build. That's okay, right. I'm gonna hit start. And everyone's racing to get five cheese, and you get cheese from generating the moon. Now, in this case, and you'll see it's black now, right? The, the world is a kind of a different color. It's just kind of like a space background. There we go. Satellites are up. And we're exploring deep space, looking for moons to generate cheese. But in the meantime, I'm going to deploy something. Moon. Oh, man, someone's already got a moon? Dang. Got a moon. Uh, let's say you could discover, ooh, no, 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 let's discover a UFO. Let me type UFO. Uh, man, you're going you're gonna to win before this goes through. No. What do you, what do you have to have? What are we, you need cheese, right? Yeah, but you, you, you'll generate cheese from your moon. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I won't collect it. Yeah, don't collect it. <laughs> well, so you, there's still like a victory button. You, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. I'm going to set it up so we can discover spaceships and those will generate uh, aliens for some reason. And, and I, I don't know if I said this. I said this to myself, but I don't know if I said it out loud. Uh, like, you usually would want like the victory condition to be something that isn't even part of the game yet. Basically, like we should have just started with the victory condition being cheese and like not built any rules to get to the cheese and then use the Moloch to sort of vote in those rules. Yeah. That, that's when it's more interesting where like you start with like this population being your utility emoji, but you don't really know how you're going to get to the victory condition. Okay, so I'm going to deploy this alien finding thing where if you happen upon a UFO, you can collect aliens from them for some reason. Usually what you would want to do is have some victory condition that's like build a castle and then have it set up so you have to, you know, collect a bunch of brick and have a bunch of workers, but then have a bunch of other things, like whether they'll be trading or collecting or even like warring parties. And you can see how kind of like this, this these two people are kind of invading on my territory. And if they were to cover up all these blocks, then I wouldn't be able to even move. You can, you can surround someone. 
but eventually there could be war where you can take over a piece or there's like kind of these movable elements. So yeah, so we can vote on the alien thing. Also on the moon. Two What's moons. Question? There's two moons. Two moons. Yep, two, two different players have moons and you can see down here that uh, the green player, that's this guy, with a lot of satellites generating a lot of power has already collected two cheese. But yeah, a, a lot of people talk about like settlers of Japan. I think that um, after talking to ABSA, it would be good, Alex added that, it would be good if the tiles were like hexagons instead of squares, or you could have a choice Right, because you may still want squares. Like you could technically like set up the game of chess here and have all the pieces be movable and have them be on rules that are based on chess rules. And then you could like kind of play chess for Dow dollars for some reason. The the goal of this is kind of to explore interesting economics and explore you know on chain governance and how that politics can work and and how the participation works. So who's closest? We've got three cheese. What are we playing to? Four cheese? Yeah, yeah. And moon gi moon gives you, how do, you, how do you see how many the moon gives you? Uh, you can click on the moon. Oh. That work? Gives you one, one cheese, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna process this before that last person gets their cheese. Let's see if we can discover a, uh, let's see if we can discover a UFO. So. Whoever that last person is with the four, don't 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 grab your last uh, or don't hit the victory button. You can grab your last cheese. You can have five cheese, but just don't hit the victory button. Let's see if we can find a UFO. Oh, someone's already found a guy. So yeah, so now that pink dude right there. Oh yeah, we got UFOs popping up everywhere. Now. So you can see how like the entire dynamics of the game can shift based on a, a vote in a lockdown. So so if we had instead of having the victory condition be so close, if we had these rules take you know, uh, a long time to go through and have a game run for more, more like an hour rather than, you know, a five or 10 minute session. And we were kind of heading towards some victory condition far in the future. Then you can see how like all this collecting resources and war and trading and, and, and also like the whole politicking thing. Okay, there we go. I can discover an alien and it'll show up in my inventory and I'll be happy now that that works. All right, one last screenshot too. What happens if you rage quit? Uh, it, so right now, if you rage quit, it's broken. It doesn't. It doesn't work at all. But uh, uh, normally, when you rage quit, it. I rage quit. <laughs> did it just? Did you just throw an error? It says rage quit. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So if you rage quit, what I want it to be able to do is somewhat mimic how the rage quit in the Moloch Dow works, where all of us bought in with a dollar. But say we played for a while and like the governance is just not going the way you want it to, right? Like things, uh, whoever number six is, you should probably, uh, you should probably claim your victory before uh, anybody else does. Because because num this dude's up to four. If he gets his fifth one, you're going to lose your victory. There we go. Okay. So yeah, the way that we want the rage quit. <laughs> good game, good game. Good game. I'm going to send you a, a clap and a star. The way, the way the rage quit should work is sort of like, if you've played the game for just a little bit, people are voting in stupid things. It doesn't really fit the narrative of the game. You don't like the way the game's going. You should be able to quit and pull out, say you put in a dollar, you should be able to pull out like 75 cents, right? But if you've played the game for a long time, you voted yes on a lot of things, like things have gone the way you wanted it and you're just rage quitting because you're being a baby, that, that should only give you like 10 cents or five cents, right? Yeah, you don't want everyone to rage quit right before right. one guy wins the whole thing, right? Right, right. exactly. When, when we were that close to that, if someone were to rage quit, maybe you give them like two cents, or maybe it gets to a point where like they don't get anything, but they rage quit and like the developer gets five cents or something like that, mm -hmm. which is something we haven't talked about here. So if, if that person just collected their eight bucks or whatever it was, a small cut of that, like six cents or 16 cents, will go to the developer of each of these. So what it does is it takes all the mechanics that we used in the game, and each of those has a developer that created them. It's gonna give them a small cut of the, the, the fee. So, so some, someone, it's me, because I built all of them, but once, once everybody is kind of participating in building smart contracts and adding to the ecosystem, they will be rewarded back if their pieces are used in the game.
All right. I, I think that was a good playthrough, guys. Thanks for uh, playing along. I appreciate all the uh, participation. Hit us up in the Telegram if you have more questions. Thanks for playing the DAO. Thank you very much. See you Thanks, guys. Austin. Thanks, dude. Thanks, guys. Good game. Any more questions before I close the, the window? All right. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thanks for playing the DAO.